morning, if you're watching this in the morning. Uh, this is Lifting with Lauren, the podcast, and this is episode 11. I'm hoping that my, my sound is on here. Looks like it's on. Okay. Um, anywho, uh, yeah, episode 11, not gonna lie, did not want to do a podcast today, but I did it for my followers who are listening, which is probably like two people, so... Congratulations to the two of you who are listening consistently. <laughs> anyway, um, today I just kind of wanted to do a brief podcast on how to build your own strength training program. I'm not going to get into like the details of every other type of program because that would just take forever. And there's lots of different types of workout programs that you could build for yourself. But I think that what happens lots of times is when people are trying to start working out problem is that one problem in a lot of cases is that they don't know what to do or they get so bombarded with information from like fitness influencers or articles or whatever else it is that they are consuming whatever type of content that they're consuming that they'll try one program and they'll jump over and try another program and they don't understand why nothing is working and um just basically a lot of overwhelm Um, and the prevalence of swipe workouts is not really helping. Granted, it's just a social media, um, fad thing. People are doing the swipe workouts because it's easier to consume the content. You're not watching an entire video. And sometimes those workouts have really good, um, intentions. So they're not actually trying to get you to go and try this workout, but, they're trying to teach you something, and I know that I've I've done them before too, but in a lot of cases, um, people are just looking at influencers, and the influencers have the swipe workouts on their Instagram profile. If you don't know what a swipe workout is, a swipe workout is usually where there's a clip of one exercise that lasts like 10 to 30 seconds, and then you can swipe on Instagram, and then you can see the next exercise and then they, you can swipe again. Sometimes they'll have captions there. But you're just swiping between exercises to see new exercises. And um, a lot of times, from my understanding, people will try to just do those workouts. So rather than sticking to like a program or something that's specific for them, they'll kind of hop around and do these different types of programs. That's, that's kind of the fad thing right now. It used to just be, you know, you're on bodybuilding.com or T Nation, and somebody uh, publishes a new article about the best way to build your biceps, and then you try that new program, even though you didn't finish your your previous one. So lots of different places that you can get programs, and lots of people have a tendency to um, hop around from place to place. Um, side note, I have to give myself a pat on the back. All right, pretty dang good programs, because I've been doing my clients' programs, and I feel pretty good. Apparently, I can't write programs for myself, at all. I talked about that in the last podcast because I felt like crap when I write my own programs. <laughs> but now I'm doing my uh, online group coaching clients program and I feel pretty good. So anyhow, I didn't do that right. Uh, so yeah, I, I will say too, I, I hate to knock other people. Say, okay, let me, let me backtrack a little bit. So doing programs that you're just seeing online, that's actually not a horrible thing. I have even had times where just like I I didn't really have a specific goal and I did feel a little bit lost sort of um, like I I wasn't really sure what it was I wanted to accomplish I gotta grab a, a dumbbell here wasn't really sure what it was I wanted to accomplish in my training uh, I was a little overworked a little overwhelmed I didn't really want to think about it and I just wanted something new, and I have hopped around workout to workout. Sometimes that was intentional. I would literally do a new workout every day. There was actually one point um, a couple years ago where I would actually do a new workout every day. So I would write myself a workout of five exercises of just kind of not random things. I'll I'll kind of talk about the layout in a second, but I would pick, pick five exercises, maybe try to incorporate something fun like some plyometrics, so like some jumping or like I like hurdling because I used to hurdle in high school. Not hurling, but hurdling over hurdles. I like hurdle in my yard or something and like include that as part of my workout. And I would just kind of do random things just because I wanted to be physically active. 
but I didn't um, want to stick to a program necessarily because I was trying to adapt to what the heck was happening with my body. What was kind of not funny at the time was that we had, this is right after we got married, uh, Jeremiah and I got married. Um, I had this, we had this awful, awful mattress. I mean, it was just so bad. And my back is very sensitive. It always has been. I have like a little tiny spine. And we had the worst mattress in the world. And my back hurt all the time. And I've already had whatever this issue is, like with my hip and stuff. I was in so much pain for like the first year of us being married to finally one day I was like, that is it. We're buying a mattress. So because of that pain, I, was, I wasn't able to work out consistently because my hip and my back were hurting all the time. And I felt like I couldn't do anything. So anyway, if your back hurts, make sure you have a good mattress. Little, little kudos for me and Jeremiah. We just paid off our mattress because I had kicked that in the butt. Anyway, um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. So, so I have, what number is that? Five, six. I have switched programs a little bit. You can tell by my apparent ADD that obviously it would be easy for me to just hop around from program to program. But for the most part, I actually have been pretty good about being consistent. So one of the reasons that it's good to have a well-built program is so that you can consistently provide a similar yet slightly elevated stimulus to your body so that you can see improvements in your body. Um, so I know that people um, have this idea of like muscle confusion. For some reason, they think that that's a thing. It's not a thing. Um, your muscles do not get confused. <laughs> they just might get a little angry at you. But it doesn't really do much good for you to change your workout every single day. Um, if, you, if you want to see adaptations in your body, or if you wanted to see adaptations in yourself at all, you would have to continually provide a sip stimulus along the same vein of what it is you're trying to accomplish, whatever it is that's being oriented toward that goal, and then increasing whatever the intensity, the volume, the load, whatever it is in order to get you up to that goal. That's how your body adapts, is it continuously has an increase of the same stimulus. So that if you say, okay, today I'm going to do squats, so I do squats, but I don't continue to build on those squats. I can only do body weight squats because I'm not strong enough. And then I'm like, all right, I'm going to do a back, a back flip. I'm just like picking up random things. <laughs> you're not going to continue to really increase like your if your goal is leg strength. You're not going to continue to increase your leg strength if you're not constantly picking specific exercises to increase your leg strength. What you will see is that you'll actually have a bit of a plateau. Um, so... I may be strong enough to do bodyweight squats, and I may, be do, I may be strong enough to do five backflips. So maybe like a set of 20 bodyweight squats, and I can do five backflips. I, I don't know how to do backflips, so I'm just making stuff up. Um, but if I don't continuously train those two exercises, I'm not going to get stronger at those two exercises. And if those are the exercises that I've chosen to go toward my goal then I'm kind of doing myself a disservice. I'm never going to get to the goal. Okay, so that was a kind of a side note to preface the part about building your own program. I didn't, and I didn't intend to throw that in there. So anyway, that's why it's important to stick to a solid program. You should not be program hopping. It's not really good for you, unless for some reason you have a psychological reason like I did to try to like, or, or like physiologically, maybe you're trying to give yourself a break. To be honest, you really should be sticking to something consistent. And, and really too, if you have a well-built program or you have a good enough coach, Sometimes they're good enough to keep you on a similar program, but if your body's not responding the way that you need to because you're injured or you're really, really tired or you're not recovering, then they would just scale back and they would still keep you on a similar program. So anyway, let me do this set of single leg deadlifts and then we'll talk about building a program. You, me, I do kind of want to knock on bodybuilding.com for a second here. My hair is smacking the mic, so it probably sounds weird. Um, I have done a number of programs from bodybuilding.com. And to be honest with you, I just finished a program from bodybuilding.com. Their programs are awful. That's a terrible thing to say, but they really are. I mean, they're consistent. They want you to do them for 12 weeks, and that's great. And you'll probably see results, but they do, they do not appear to have professionals writing their programs. <laughs> because... Just because, like, the way that they overdo the volume 
like the number of sets that they give people for certain exercises is just outrageous. Anyway, I'm not going to go on that tangent, but they're not that great. It's a good place to start, but they're not that great. So um, this is how I write programs in general. There are lots of ways to do this. The first thing is you have to set a goal for yourself. So what is your goal for lifting? Are you trying to just look really good? Are you trying to feel really good? Do you have something specific? Do you have a, um, an athletic event that you're going to be performing in? Or do you need to be increasing your strength? Do you have a certain area of your body that you're rehabbing and you're trying to build strength there? Um, are you trying to build a bigger butt or bigger shoulders or bigger chest or whatever? Kind of have those goals in mind and you can have more than one, but you need to have some kind of general goal for yourself to start with. So that's the first thing. The next thing is determining um, how many days per week can you actually commit to training? So how many days are you realistically going to be able to put forth enough intensity and give yourself enough rest before your next training program? Remember, there are only seven days in a week, so the max would be seven. I have never assigned anybody seven days of workouts. I don't recommend it because if you're doing hard enough training and you're not an advanced athlete, and I've never worked with an advanced athlete, um, then you're not going to be working out seven days a week. More than likely, between three and five days, maybe six, usually between three and five. And if, if your workouts are really intense, it might be even less than that. Sometimes powerlifters can only work out a few days a week because the intensity is just so great because they're lifting like super heavy weights and they have to give their bones time to actually heal from their lifting. So yeah, so determining, first of all, how many days per week can you lift? Let me just double check that there's no questions or no creepers here. Me, 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 me. Okay. Um, the next one is, uh, let's see, probably not in this order. So based on your goal, so we've, we've decided how many days you're going to work out. Let's say you're going to work out three days a week. Great. Okay. So do you prefer to train your entire body every time, or do you prefer some kind of split? Some people do body part splits. I don't usually recommend them unless you have issues with recovery, which I have three months. Usually I would recommend upper lower splits or full body. Most of my clients do full body workouts because they have to increase their intensity somewhere. So, or they have to increase their stimulus somewhere. So what we normally do is we will actually kind of take advantage of the repeated bout effect and they'll train a certain group of muscles more often. That way they're seeing better results because they're not going to be the women that I work with generally are not killing themselves in the gym. There's nothing wrong with, there's nothing wrong with them. They're just, it's just not their thing. If I was working with someone who was killing themselves in the gym, I would reconsider and I would change up their, their exercise program. So recovery and adaptation are the are two of the things you have to consider too about how you're going to build your program, upper, lower, full body, body part split. To me, it's all about recovery and adaptation, balancing those two. Got to do another set of these. Hold on. Two, three, four. I'm trying to limit like um, spinal flexion so I don't mess up my sciatic nerve here. Nine, ten. Okay. Um, okay. So the next thing to consider, uh, I think what the way that I used to write programs is I used to write them. Um, uh, I used to add in exercises, exercise selection, sorry, is the next section. So with exercise selection, personally, I used to pick exercises per body part. So if you know which part of the body an exercise works the most, it helps with choosing exercises. So for example, contrary to popular belief, squats work the quads, front of the thighs more than anything else. They really don't work your butt very much at all. They work your butt more like in an eccentric, like muscle damage component, not active contracting. Same thing with the, with the quads, but they just, they hit the quads a lot more. So squats are best for the quads. Leg extensions also work the quads. So do you include both? Do you need both? Do you need both in one day? Do you need both on two different days? Things to consider. Um, bench press works the chest, the anterior, the anterior delts and the triceps. Um, so if I do bench press, should I do a triceps exercise? Depends on the person. I usually don't have my women do 
a bench press and a triceps, other, other triceps exercise, like a press down or whatever in the same day, just because it doesn't align with their goals. But if it did and, and I had a guy that wanted a big chest or big arms or a woman that wanted a big chest or big arms, I might put those in the same workout or I might have more of those exercises kind of filtered through in. So how you choose your exercises, back, then, back in the day, I used to choose mine through um, which body part was being used. Now I actually choose based on movement pattern because a lot of my um, a lot of my clients are actually a bit more general health and wellness oriented. They are not concerned about necessarily building a specific part of their body. If they are, then we take that into consideration. So this is this is kind of the difference with body parts. You can have. Um, Yeah, I, I don't know. So, okay, a shoulder press, this one that I'm doing now, um, a shoulder press works all three uh, parts of the shoulders, but it also works the triceps. But bench press also works the front of the shoulders and the chest and the triceps. So there's a little bit of overlap there. So we're, we're, we're working similar body parts, but those two are two different movement patterns. So whenever I program, I go off of movement patterns. Um, this is something that I actually did learn from uh, Dr. Brett Contreras. So these are the movement patterns that I usually consider. Um, horizontal pressing, like ben bench press. Horizontal pulling, like a row or a seated row or a bent over row. Remember, it's horizontal in reference to your body. Think of anatomical position. Anatomical position is wherever you're standing like this. If you're pulling this way, even if you're bent over, it's still horizontal rowing. It's in reference to your body. Um, the next one would be vertical pressing, such as a shoulder press. And then vertical pulling, such as a pull-up or a lat pull-down. Obviously, that one's really hard, and it's also hard to program. because hardly anybody has anything they can do vertical pulling with, so you have to know your stuff to do that. The next ones would be... Um, some axial loaded stuff like vertical leg movements. So um, I usually do like there's in the lower body is a little bit different. So it's not really like vertical horizontal necessarily, but it, it kind of is. So there's like vertical knee low, knee dominant, which would be like your squats. You have your hinge pattern. So I, I usually actually do like squat pattern, hinge pattern, um, vertical hip pattern. So that's like a bridge. So it's like for me, squat pattern, deadlift pattern, uh, glute bridge pattern. That's how I do it. But you could you could break it back even further and be like knee pattern, hip pattern, and go from there. So I would normally assign someone a squat variation, a deadlift variation, and a glute bridge variation, and then extra things on top of that. Hold on. Eight, nine, and ten. Good. So... Um, <laughs> Tell myself good because I did good. Um, so vertical pressing, vertical pulling, horizontal pressing, horizontal pulling, knee dominant, hip dominant, glute bridge, whatever, or squat pattern, deadlift pattern, hinge pattern. I mean, sorry, squat pattern, hinge pattern, glute bridge pattern. Those are the main things that I go off of. And everything else to me is an accessory. So those are usually going to be comprising like your big core exercises. So like your, your, your exercises are, that are going to be using the most muscles. And those are generally the ones that I try to prioritize with clients. So we're not going to be doing a lot of single arm stuff. I've had clients that I've had to do that with before simply for control purposes. They needed to be able to control certain joints because of recovery issues. But in general, we're going to try to use as many muscles in an exercise as possible. Not like the crazy combo exercises where you're doing like a lunge into a cartwheel, into a squat and a shoulder press and all, <laughs> all this crazy combination stuff. I try to limit that as much as possible. And if they do that, usually it's in like a circuit or something. But uh, yeah, usually not that. We try to keep exercises as simple as possible. But if they're compound exercises where they're working more than one joint at a time or they're working more than one muscle group at a time, then we're kind of getting more bang for your buck. And those are usually the exercises that you can load more. So you have more possibility of increasing your, um, your physical adaptations if you're using exercises that include more, more joints or more muscles because there's, there's 
Even though like single joint exercises, you can have more control over what's happening on that one joint. Technically, on, in the other direction, in the compound exercises, you've got more overall strength um, and more stability. So you're able, because there's more stuff involved. Like in the, in the long run, you'll have more stability. So you're able to, you will, you will be able to develop more stability. Sorry, I'm trying to be specific here. So um, you'll be able to load that more. You'll be able to do probably not quite as high a volume, but the intensity there is more, more important. So how much weight you're actually using becomes kind of important. Um, so essentially your compound exercises are gonna be the best ones to include. So once I choose exercises, hold on. I lost count. We'll say this is nine and 10. So I normally pick exercises at the same time that I'm assigning them to certain days. And I try, I personally try to spread things out. I gotta write down what weights I'm doing here. I'm trying to keep track. Um, so for example, if I was picking out leg, lower body stuff first, which I usually do, I'll pick out lower body exercises and I'll be like, okay, I want this person, this person is a little bit more lower body focused. They want to have a bigger butt. So we're going to prioritize some lower body exercises. We're going to spread it out over the three days they're going to work out. So we're going to pick glute specific, like glute bridge specific exercises first. Let's maybe do a glute bridge on this day, a hip thrust on this day, and maybe like a single leg bridge on this day. So I'll kind of place that out. And I'll be like, okay, so what's the secondary exercise that's gonna help with glute building? Usually squats, deadlifts don't help as much. They do a little bit, but squats are usually a little bit better as far as like second in command. So I'll maybe put in some squat variations. So let's say like a, a regular body weight squat, a back squat, and maybe like a lunge variation. Okay, so we got that. So then let's go ahead and add in our hinge variation. So I'll pick out Diff, different deadlift variations or maybe the same deadlift variation repeating it over three days remember that's not muscle confusion over just three days within a week we're actually giving ourselves a little bit of a break because that workout program is going to be repeated the next week so choosing variations of an exercise is different than doing a different variation every single time you work out picking three variations of an exercise or five variations of an exercise and then repeating those week after week that's still going to provide a good stimulus that's usually what i'm thinking I'll pick out those then I'll maybe pick out some accessory exercises you know we're working the glutes so let's maybe throw in um, some like lateral band walks because we want to hit the lateral portion of the glutes that goes back to knowing the muscle groups and like which exercises works which specific muscle groups as opposed to movement patterns so um, I want to hit like upper like glute med area so we're going to do some lateral band walks and we might want to do some external rotation stuff too so we'll maybe do like seated um, uh, abductions, which are a little bit more rotational in nature, or maybe we'll do like a fire hydrant. Okay. So I got my glute program worked out for my person, but now I'm going to throw in some upper body stuff because they can't walk around with stick arms. So we'll throw in like some push up. Like if, if they don't really care about upper body, we'll do as few upper body exercises as possible to still maintain strength. So we'll start off with like, maybe we're not going to hit every single movement pattern every day. I, I eventually learned to stop trying to do that. So we'll do like a push up one day as our horizontal pressing. We'll do a shoulder press another day. That's some vertical pressing. And then maybe on this day, we'll, we'll do like um, some horizontal rowing. So like a banded row. And then maybe we'll do like a lat pull down on this day. We'll do a lat pull down. And maybe they actually really want to work on their chin ups or something. So we'll put a chin up on this day. And then maybe over here, we'll throw in an extra triceps exercise just because. So that's like two upper body exercises per day. And then we've got like probably four or five lower body exercises because this person wanted to work on their glutes. So I've got the majority of the program laid out. Only thing to add in is some other accessories like your ab work calf work or whatever else is necessary for the person maybe creating a warm-up that helps to kind of go along with that I actually put up a graphic recently about how to do your warm-ups and whatnot so that's how i build programs i feel like that's the most well-rounded way to build programs but you know it's me so i just think i know things um so hopefully that kind of gives you an idea i'm not going to get into other ways of building uh, building programs even though you could technically do pretty similar stuff with like upper lower splits or um or with even body part splits. Body part splits are gonna be actually a little bit more simpler because you just like list out a bunch of exercises that hit the muscles from different angles and then you like throw them all into one, one day and then another day and another day. To me, it'd be harder to like vary that up at all because you're having so many exercises that hit the same muscle, but I digress. Anyway, so hopefully that helps. Um, that was just kind of an overview of how I build programs and how you can build a program. Hopefully that kind of made some sense. Uh, do remember that I, I do have a, I have a, a 
a college background in this kind of stuff. So we studied a lot more biomechanics and I also spent a lot of time like reading research and research interpreted by other professionals. So that kind of helps me with exercise selection. I am able to just kind of pull it out of my head really quick. For people who are not as experienced, it takes a little bit longer. If you are getting frustrated with creating your own program, you know, just don't feel like it has to be perfect. Just take, take, choose to the best of your ability. And if you feel like you're not getting the adaptations you need, kind of reassess, see if you're, if you've chosen exercises that you're able to progress, that you're able to get stronger in. If you haven't, then maybe change those exercises out, but try to stick with your program for at least four to six weeks, if not even longer, because usually that's when you're gonna see the best adaptations. And if you need more help with that, because you don't want to write your own program, hit me up. Anyhow, thank you guys for listening. I'm just gonna double check one more time. There's no questions. Okay, thank you guys for listening. Bye.